Talk ZB. All the reaction and analysis. The All Sport Breakfast. Until 9. With Peter Kelly of Bailey's Real Estate. Trust a proven performer. News Talk ZB. Welcome back to Waikato's All Sports Breakfast, brought to you by Peter Kelly from Bailey's Real Estate. And I met this young lady at a, an event when uh, Parafed Waikato put on uh, uh, a welcome back to the Paralympians that came back, and she was one of the Paralympians that went to Tokyo. And uh, I became captivated by her story. Her name's Anna Taylor, and uh, what she's done and what she's achieving in life. And I thought, wow, she's just sort of mid-twenties and she's done all that and I'm going, I'm early sixties and I'm still struggling to get to half of that done but she's joining us now and uh, good morning Anna and how are you today? Uh, good morning, what an intro, thank you. <laughs> well I was, Anna, you were, when we met out there you're captivating in what you're doing and what you're achieving in life because um, you, to you life's got no boundaries has it? No, I feel like if you have the opportunity and ability to do it then get out and get there. Well, cycling, you went off to t- uh, Tokyo and you, you know, held the record, world record for about, what, four minutes before some other horrible cyclist nicked it off you, but um, was outstanding the times you were riding and what you were doing over there, eh? Thank you. Yes, that was a, it was a big highlight to hold the Paralympic record for, it was about, um, it was about four minutes, um, but I held it. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's all yours. And your name's on the board. Well, probably yeah, one well, of the names on my board, anyways, is holding the record. <laughs> I, d- I did take a photo of it. I don't think it's official because it counts at the end of the session. But um, in that moment, uh, I will hold. I will hold true. Yeah, look, I'm with that. What do you got, Foxy? And it's Foxy here, and, and I just want to talk about your can-do attitude. You know, look, Minty's obviously told me a, a lot about you, and you've gone, obviously, from rowing, and you've had to adapt and and have that can-do attitude into cycling. And tell our listeners, uh, you know, a little bit about your story. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I left New Zealand um, when I was 19 to uh, pursue rowing through the U.S. college system. And so I was living the dream up in America, uh, rowing a boat, and within the first four or five months being there, I started getting very unwell, and after a few tests and scans and stuff, found out that I had thyroid cancer. So through my first years of college in the States was um, managing the treatment and recovery from that. Then just as I was recovering and hitting my stride again uh, in rowing. It was in my last year of college. I tore the labrum in my hip and needed surgery and rehab on that. And so that was just before I um, graduated university and then came home to New Zealand to rehab that. But in my mind, I was fully set on getting into the New Zealand system and pursuing rowing as a career. I knew having come through cancer and um, coming out the other side of that and being in top form, that that was definitely on my cards. I had full faith that that was something that I'd be able to do. Um, And then just as I was coming out of rehab, getting my strength back in the gym from my hip, I just tweaked my back a little bit. um, And then... (laughs) And then one morning I woke up uh, in September of 2016 um, with a severe spinal cord injury um, called uh, acute quarter equina syndrome. Essentially the disc in my back had prolapsed so severely and it had compressed the spinal cord. Uh, So that essentially stopped my rowing career, although I didn't know it at the time because in my mind I had come through cancer and that was my 10 out of 10 worst thing that could happen. And so anything under that, so this back injury, I didn't think it was something that would stop me in my pursuit of my goal. And I guess that's the, <laughs> that's the journey that I've been, oh, I've been yeah. riding. So, and we um, talk about, you know, we talk about a can-do attitude and, and then you brought a bike. 
And and Minty touched on it earlier, and and, and the rest is history. But um, you know, again, tell our listeners, you know, that transition. You've you, you've gone from being a high performance athlete, and and you've been sitting in a in a boat, and now you've changed, and you've had to change, um, and now you're a cyclist. Yeah, so I kind of stumbled into um, Paralympic cycling. Um, it was actually an old teammate of mine suggested that I look into it. And for me, I just didn't see it as a as a, a road that I could go down. I didn't understand what disability was. I didn't believe that I had one. Um, it was really hard for me to accept that the injury that I'd had is permanent and I've got permanent um, damage to my nerves and muscles as a result. Um, but getting on a bike and being able to, you know, ride a bike and be competitive in that space, it gave me a real freedom that I felt like I'd lost through my injury, not being able to row, not being able to run, not being able to do the things that I used to be able to do. Um, the, I guess the process of grieving the injury and acceptance of having a disability has been a, a journey. <laughs> A journey of acceptance, one that I'm still on, but um, I guess I had to redirect my mind and my goals and what I was wanting to achieve into a different avenue because uh, rowing was not an option anymore. So, Annie, you're still you're training out at High Performance in Cambridge. Still, you're still part of the High Performance Unit and the cycling and everything out there, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. So that's uh, just. Yeah, everybody just. I, I get the I get the impression when you go cycling that you have a um, no one's going to beat me attitude. <laughs> um, I tr- I try to have that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> seems work, seems to work pretty well for me. I think. Oh, I think I have to I have to pick my um, the people that I, I choose to race though. Uh, that's fair now. Anna, <laughs> tell me what you do apart from high performance because I know you work and and you work in the community too. What's the other things you're doing? Yes, so I am a youth support worker in child and adolescent mental health. And so um, it's a real privilege, actually, and um, I'm really grateful for the uh, opportunity to work um, with the young people and the families that I do along their journey, um, support them and champion them back to health. Minty, um, Minty as you know, I'm a very honest um Old man, and um, Anna, you've just absolutely blown me away. To be fair, and you, Minty, just touched on it before. You're only 26 years of age, and what you've achieved already, and obviously, and what you're doing away from the sport as well, and and, and helping young people, and and I just have so much respect for that. Oh, cheers! Um, I I did actually just turn 30. No, we're still saying, oh, no, oh. We're, still, we're still saying 26. Yeah, yeah we're, we want, we're, we, oh. we've called 26. I would, I would run with the 26, Anna. I was 26 <laughs> once upon a time. <laughs> now, the other neat thing that's happened to you, you just joined a board on, on, a, on a national board for, for welfare of athletes. Yes, so I'm on the um, Paralympic Athletes Council, so that's just newly established. Uh, it's a really great opportunity for us, um, part in who represent the athletes, um, in the decision making and consultation with the uh, Paralympics board, um, but also to promote the Paralympic movement in New Zealand, which is something that I've really grown to appreciate and um, hold closely to me, um, especially as someone who has what you would call an invisible disability. It's not super obvious when you meet me in person, uh, the struggles that I face, but there are lots of people out there um, who deserve representation um, and accessibility. Um, yeah, I just, um, I'm with you on that. There's nothing worse than people thinking you're normal when inside there's things that just are abnormal and you can't really take off the top skin and show them. Yes, yeah. And it's it's something that has... It's a journey that I'm on as well. When you, um, I, I guess a, a coping mechanism for me is just to ignore it um, <laughs> within myself. Um, but that doesn't that doesn't help the situation much at all. Um, so I guess if I can be true to myself and 
um, the struggles that I face, then, you know, maybe that will empower someone else to be true to themselves as well. Anna, to me, listening to you there, it, um, to me that obviously you wake up every day and you you try and be the best you can. And, and, and as I talked about earlier, have that can-do attitude and that just comes through in bucket loads listening to you this morning. And um, I'm sure our listeners have, have really enjoyed hearing a little bit about your journey um, and just uh, the amount you, you know, you're a young lady, you're 30 years of age and how much you've already achieved Minty, crammed, crammed into Minty it's life. absolutely blown me away. And as uh, Minty talks about sometimes in here when we're doing interviews, there's a little bit of a dust in our eyes. And, Quite a um, bit of dust this morning, and, and And for me, um, I've got so much respect. Obviously, I haven't met you personally, but listening to your journey this morning, um, you're an amazing young lady, and uh, carry on being you and, and, and doing what you're doing um, in the community. I, I, I you know, can't speak more highly of you. Oh, cheers. Thanks for that. Well, young um, lady, look, I, all I'm going to say is um, that night I met you in, at the, the gardens, I, I was totally impressed and, and stunned by what you've achieved, and I still am, and um, very proud to have you as part of our Waikato community and, uh, um, and high-performance athletes and then and then giving back so much. And, uh, um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm blown away. Fox, I said to Foxy, I'm going to put this amazing young lady on the radio today, and he said, yeah, okay, and it's uh, yeah, it's affected both of us a little bit. We're just very proud to be able to talk to you today. Oh, cheers. Um, I guess it's important for me to say that there's been a lot of people who have supported and championed me along the way. Um, just unparalleled support and guidance and love and care and everything that I've faced along the way. And I feel a real sense of wanting to give back because I'm never going to be able to repay the people who supported me along the way. So if I can move it forward, pay it forward to the people that I encounter along the way, then I think I'll do it justice. Oh, I think you're doing it more than justice, young lady. You have a really, really neat, neat Saturday. You take care and uh, make every post a winner because I know you do and um, you've made our show pretty special this morning. Um, uh, yeah, I, I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. Oh, cheers. Thank you so much. Right. See you later, eh? Cheers. Bye. What an amazing young lady, Minty, um, you know, and somebody who's had diversity in their life and continued to have that attitude to be the best she can every day. And what has she achieved and crammed into 30 years of yep. uh, of a young lady's life? Uh, unbelievable, Minty. That's just blowing me away this morning, to be fair. When we come back, we're going to talk to Cathy Wooler. We're going to talk from Parafed Waikato. We're taking a whole lot of Parafed athletes surfing. Josh Smith of 